welcome. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Well, uh, it's been a while since I've given you an update on the new Afghan box camera project. This is a new design of Afghan box camera or self-developing camera, Cuban Polaroid. They, they're known by various names. This is the new design that Ethan Moses and I collaborated on. There's already a one episode of me uh, building this. I'll put a link down below. But I've been working on it since and on and off of the last few weeks. And I'm at a point now where it's almost done. And I thought I would show you the progress I've made. Stay tuned. So this project started out as a kit of flat plywood parts, laser cut. And my job was to glue it together, sand it really good, and do some kind of a finish on it. Now, some of the previous laser cut plywood camera projects that I've done with Ethan, I've just finished it with a real light sanding and putting some kind of Danish oil finish on it. But this one, I thought I would go to a little bit more trouble and put a little bit more extensive of a finish on it. Well, this is the back side of the camera, the operator's side. Up here on top, you have the peep sight uh, window for looking into the camera for focusing. There's a slide lock that opens up like that, and then the door opens up like that. So I have a brass colored hinge and a knob here. I don't have a lens in place, but you can see the uh, view screen inside the camera there. So down on the bottom of the main door, there is one slide lock. And up on top of the door, there's another slide lock. With both of those locks pushed up, you can open up the entire back door to gain access to the camera. The arm sleeve will mount to this hole with a round wooden flange on the back and front. We haven't made the flange or the arm sleeve yet, but that's where it's going to go. It gives you plenty of room to reach your arm in and manipulate the camera. And here you can see I've chosen a brass colored piano hinge for the main door, a smaller brass hinge for the peep sight door, and then two brass colored knobs, one for the peep sight door, one for the main door. For the exterior finish, I first sanded it with some, I think it was 600 grit uh, sandpaper with a random orbital sander. And then I started with 800 grit with hand sanding with the grain of the wood. And then I put the first coat. It's a combination uh, cherry stain and polyurethane finish. So it's a it's an all-in-one kind of a finish. And when that dried, I then sanded it with 1200. And then once again with, I think, 1600 grit sandpaper, wiped all the dust off. And then I put a second coat on. And I'm applying it with a brush, uh, not spraying it. And when you do a brush, you want to go with the grain and make sure all the bubbles uh, and streaks are out of it. And yeah, it came out pretty good. I'm not a very super accomplished woodworker, but I was pretty happy with the smoothness and and uh, the seems like a good durability on this finish. It should afford me some degree of weather protection when this is out outdoors being used. So then on the inside of the camera, I brushed the entire insides by hand with flat black acrylic paint. And I really like the, the look of the uh, flat black acrylic, especially brushing it on by hand. It gives it a nice uh, dull flat finish that resists uh, reflections. These are the screws and washers for the two knobs. Probably should uh, paint those black. It's probably not really super important though. So the bottom section of the camera, I've sprayed the inside with Flex Seal. Flex Seal is a rubbery coating that gives it a waterproof liquid resistant finish because I anticipate that there will be certainly dribbles and drips and drops from the chemical processing tanks down here. And also, this plate that supports the film storage cabinet and the various chemical processing tanks, I've also sprayed it with Flex Seal as well. So these two pieces down here glued together, they actually cover the uh, tripod nut and the nut for the shoulder strap bracket, which we'll show you in a little bit. And also they elevate the processing tanks a little bit higher so there's enough elevation to reach it properly. And by the way, all the joints back here have been uh, glued and caulked and then painted with black paint. Here we have the film gate. It slides back and forth on a set of rails with 3D printer bearings. The screen itself is a piece of Lexan plastic. 
Um, I'm using a double uh, layer of ProGaff gaffer's tape as a cloth hinge. There is a series of magnets up here on the top and there's a little cloth um, handle. So you might be able to see the recessed magnet in the hole up here. And then we're using a magnet glued on the front side of the Lexan and a couple extra reinforcing magnets on the back. And uh, so it closes up very nicely like that. So the front side of the Lexan has been sanded down with 600 grit sandpaper on a random orbital sander. So it makes a pretty good ground glass view screen. So just a piece of paper in here is a test sheet. So the paper goes in the gate and it closes up like that with a magnet. And then you set the film gate to your preset focal distance that you set up. So there's a set of rods here for the 3D printer bearing and they just insert through these holes there. So once you have the main door open, you can actually pull these rods out and remove the film gate from uh, the mounting rods. Okay, on the front of the camera we have the lens board. I have not yet mounted the lens, but it has two mounting brackets that slide like that and like that that enable you to remove the lens board itself. Painted black on the uh, back side, the flange for the lens board is painted black. This is the front of the ground glass view screen with my test piece of paper in there, right? And the lens just fits in there like that and you just slide these brackets back and to hold it in place. By the way, all of these metric screws have double nuts on the back side and they're jammed together so that the nuts won't come loose, but there's slack in the hardware to give a nice, even, smooth movement so it's not too tight, not too loose. Well, an interesting idea that Ethan had was to be able to carry this camera over the shoulder with a strap. And so we have this nice webbing strap material and we have this nifty little strap bracket that uses these 3 8 threaded bolts with 3D printed knobs and these uh, screw into some recessed hardware in the frame of the camera. So there's one on top and there's one on the bottom side and this gives us a, a strap mount to carry the camera over our shoulder. And again I've uh, finished these so they're relatively smooth and shiny. Here's the underneath side of the camera. Here's the other mount for the other shoulder strap bracket. It goes right here. Recessed hardware. We have a recessed nut for our tripod mount. And then I've added some rubber feet here that on four corners so when you sit this down on a table you're not going to scratch up the bottom of the camera because Ethan does like to use his camera on a table a portable table instead of mounting it to a tripod you can do it either way tripod nuts available some little rubber feet for a table so it doesn't slide around that works good and then your little shoulder strap brackets will quickly and easily unscrew and remove from the camera once you've arrived at your destination well, there's still a few things I have to do to finish this camera. Obviously, we're lacking an arm sleeve. There's a big gaping hole there. Uh, we have to laser cut the two mounting rings for the inside and the outside. And then for the arm sleeve itself, we're going to use two layers of a dark uh, black uh, fabric that we've used before for other kinds of projects like this. The traditional way to put the arm sleeve together, of course, is to sew it and then put an elastic cuff on the front, kind of like what you have on a changing bag. But Ethan has been experimenting with kind of quicker, easier, more expedient ways to make uh, arm sleeves. One of those methods was to actually use a spray adhesive instead of sewing. And the other method actually, which we might do, is to use a really good cloth, professional grade gaffer's tape, like pro gaff tape, and actually tape it together. And we're really interested in that because if you look at a lot of the traditional Afghan box cameras made in other countries, you'll see that they're using oftentimes makeshift arm sleeves out of uh, jackets or shirts or the trouser legs out of pants, you know, as, as an arm sleeve. So there's a lot of ways to do this uh, inexpensively. Ideally, of course, we'll sew an arm sleeve together, but we are going to try using a gaffer tape version initially. So we still need also to mount the lens on the front lens board as well. And of course, with this uh, baffle for the uh, paper safe and the vertical chemical 
chemical slot tanks, we have to put together those tanks and the storage compartment out of black uh, acrylic plastic that's been laser cut and then uh, uh, cement welded together. So all that has to finish. And then, oh yes, the web belt, I have to thread it through these brackets and so we have a carrying strap. But after that, we hope to do some initial tests of it. And of course, as you might have seen in an earlier video, Ethan has already made his first prototype of this camera, and I've shown some of the results of using that as well. But I look forward to taking this thing out and start making some portraits, and that's going to be exciting. Well, in the meantime, if you have any questions about this project or, or suggestions or comments, I'd love to entertain them. Drop a note down below, would you? And as always, stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.